What's up guys, Zach Hample here with you along with a very special guest. As a lot of you guys probably know, there is a documentary about me called Zach Hample vs. The World and this is a feature length film, it's 95 minutes, which is just pff, amazing. And this dude named Jeff Siegel is the filmmaker. Without him, this movie would not exist. And so, Jeff, do you want to tell people what we are doing today, basically? Well, we just figured we'd sit down because this film uh, was so long in the making and we went through such a journey to finally get it finished that we wanted to sit down, watch the movie together, reflect on their experiences, chat about it, and invite your uh, YouTube audience in uh, our conversation so they can hear what our process was like. Exactly. And so right here, uh, my laptop is sitting right in front of us. We are going to be watching it and just basically talking amongst ourselves and to you. So are we ready to start this thing? Sure. Give it a, give it a whirl. So basically, we want to give people a countdown so they know exactly when to start so that the film syncs up for them. Right. So we should do like, like a three, two, one, boom. That sounds like it's all you. Three, two, one, boom. Three, two, one, boom. And on the boom, you can hit play. Ready? Three, two, one, boom. All right. So we're listening to it here. Perfect. Nice Perfect. logo. Shout out to, wait for it, wait for it, 1091 Pictures, the distributor of this documentary. And there's his name, Jeff Siegel Films. How does that feel? Oh, it feels wonderful. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, look, I, I, this was a film that was made. Uh, and this is Jason Giambi going yard in the final week of the old Yankee Stadium. That's me over the AIG sign. I cut you off. I was just saying that, uh, sorry, I'm I have just a... trying to plug this guy in still. <laughs> yeah, I, my name's all over this movie, but it's just because it was a, uh, a movie that had no budget that uh, I met you and, and thought this was a great story and it was a total passion project labor of love and that's why not a lot of people worked on it and that's why it took so long to exactly make. that was johnny damon right there the night after the giambi home run so this kind of put me on the map two home runs in two nights in the same spot in right center field did a stupid dance both times i mean i i was astounded by this when you were at the beginning when we first started working on this and you shared these clips of you catching home runs I mean, I know that the commentators are as well, but it's unbelievable to watch two, two nights in a row the same guy catch the ball. And that was a Francisco Cervelli shot. This is one of my favorite things, too. It's so clean. Just pitchers, hand, batters, bat, your glove. This was an easy catch right here. I mean, all alone, boop, right in the front row. That's so clean, too. Just I'm beautiful. a clean machine. <laughs> now, this is our... Uh, First interview. Our first interview, Jared Diamond of the Wall Street Journal, uh, baseball, national baseball writer. Oh, uh, Lance, I know that kid. He's cool. How old is he now? That's what's interesting. This film took so long. Some of these kids have grown up over the process. Tyler Kepner from the New York Times, national baseball writer. Yeah, so that first interview that you saw of me just a minute ago. Oh, Maddie, all right. That was in 2014, eight years before this film came out. See, a long time coming. And here's your friend Maria Marino. Oh, she's the best. I took that photo. Photo credit, Zach Hample. Home Run Derby in San Diego, Petco Park. That was nuts. Home Run Derby is so much fun. Are you the guy who's home to in an art form? I am indeed. So Carlos Correa right now there. Now this, we got to talk about this. Bob, Bob Costas, Costas name-checking me. To me, it blows me away that, uh, that the person calling a baseball game in the booth could ever possibly know the name of the fan in the stands who catches the ball. That is just mind-blowing. Oh, yeah, two homers in one game. That's always fun to do. Now, how many times do we have to re-record these numbers here? 61, oh, 61. stadiums, <laughs> soon to be 62, 63. Exactly. I've caught over 70 home run balls, 80 home run balls. That was in Philly. Again, two home runs in one game. San Diego, that little home run deck. There's Heath. Heath Bell, my buddy. Heath was so cool to me when he came up with the Mets in like 04, 05. Oh, we'll get into that in here. Oh, we will. 
Oh, Heath, you're the one that's gifted. I mean, that blows people away, too. You have a baseball card. I have a whole video about signing those cards. I'll link to it in the description. Jonathan Fader, you found him. Yeah, he, a fascinating. I mean, I, I wanted to interview different people and get context about you. And Fader, sports psychologist, former team psychologist of the Mets, I thought he would have a great take, and he did. And there's Darren Ravel. Uh, one of two bobbleheads about me. There's another one that you can get uh, April 10th, 2022 in Reading, Pennsylvania. Uh-oh. But there's a darker side. Oh, the I... dark side. You like that behind the back catch? And here's Jared from the Wall Street Journal saying, in these crazy unsure times, it's comforting that everybody can hate on you. My mom doesn't hate on me. That was at City Field. Is that true? Most people have no idea who you are? Um, maybe well. on the planet, but if you come to a baseball stadium with me, everybody seems to know me. Here it is, Zach Hampel versus the world. Now, here's some of my narration. This is his voice in the film. Well, and listen, you know, not everyone likes that documentary te uh, storytelling technique where you're narrating your own story, but... I didn't do it to put myself in there to make myself famous, but I really wanted to bring people on my own fascination journey with you. And this is my real story. Uh, I go into it a little further later, but... I mean, I was just blown away by you when I discovered you, and I, I wanted to kind of be the entry point into the story through my own fascination. Now look, A's hats in two different stadiums, though. Look at that. Yankee Stadium BP is always pretty crowded. Two or three in 12 years. And how many do you have for the record at the moment? Well, as of recording this, 11,659. I feel like this visual too really is mind boggling when you see all the bins. Number 5,000. And now we're just doing a little catch up kind of bringing people back your backstory and going through the milestones. Now, do you think this is true? If you show up, you'll, I mean, obviously that's the first rule. You have to show up in order to be in the game. You got to play the lottery to win, right? You know, some stadiums are really easy to catch baseballs. If you get there early, it's not too crowded during batting practice. So it's a big part of it. Got to be there. Here's Heath's story. The origin story. There I am, September 29th, 2005. I'll link to this blog entry in the description for this video. I should, should make notes about what I said I'm going to link to. And now the, let's talk about the refrigerator. This is a real thing. You, you keep your baseball tally. Oh, yeah, the snagometer, as a friend once called oh, it. Oh, I never heard that. Oh, yeah. I just loved it. I thought it's such a cool, analog, fun way to keep a tally. That's an easy one right there when no one else is around. <laughs> That was my first ball right there, that catch at the new Braves Stadium. So that felt good. So yeah, that interview that I'm doing right there well, you'll was see. filmed in 2014. You'll see I guess you're going to flash that up on the screen. Yes. There it is. April 2014, and now it's almost April 2022. I look the same, right? Hey, there we are. So this is... When we met on August 5th, 2008. And you'll learn all about me, and this is embarrassing. Here's all my photos of myself as a kid with my friends. But, but I'll the, link to that blog entry as well when I met Jeff. But the truth, oh, there I am. But the truth is. What a cutie. Oh, what a cutie. Put him. The truth is, every kid wants to catch a ball. But honestly, I think most people grow out of it. And I mean, I mean, look, when the ball's flying at you, you want it. You have that reaction. But I think most people stop desiring it and i was fascinated by you never giving that up by the way suck it mitch williams i put the hample jinx on him whoa he was, he was rude to me at shea stadium so i was very happy when you he like, gave it up you like kurt Schilling and i were devastated i mean he's kind kurt of was cool to me i know he's a controversial figure now he but, is uh, so this is true i was a grew up in pennsylvania phillies fan 93 world series that was the first year i got into them 
before the World Series. And then, Is that Eric Kinski? <laughs> that was awful because they don't make the playoffs again until 07, and then they finally win it in 08. And I was lucky to be there for Game 5 for both parts of this game. There's our man. Wait, is this a documentary about me or you? It's about you. I'm just in it for, I don't know, 10 seconds. I wish you were in it more. But I shot this just at the game as a fan celebrating. That photo was taken in 2016 when I built a pyramid of baseballs. I'll link the pyramid video in the description for this one. I was with my mom. You can see her if you look at that. Look how clip. young you look there at Yankee Stadium. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, that was the last season at the old stadium. Look at all that snow. You're look, feeling the baseball vibes in the middle of winter. I was huge. Did you see that? I'm wearing the St. Patty's Day Phillies hat. Okay. That's the green one. You can see Alan H. Seelig on these baseballs. Oh, anachronistic baseballs. Oh Wrong boy. Oh boy. Look how artsy this is. Well, we tried to shoot this to get some, make it almost look like a planet, like the sun, like the the light moving around it. Look at all those commemorative baseballs. Oh my God. I miss those large commemorative logos that used to be the size of a quarter. MLB has shrunk them down because evidently all that ink made it too easy for the batters to pick up the rotation on the pitches. Is that true? True story. Oh, that, well. So here's the first time I built a pyramid. I don't have a video from this one. This had about 2,800 balls. Right. But then I redid one a few years later. Oh, there's a home run derby ball there. I like it. Do you like this little kind of, I mean, there's not video, but there's the photo montage here showing it get made. I mean. And then these shots, which we go to quite a bit, were shot back in 2014, the first time we shot with you. Those, that was oh, in your Old drawers. American League balls. Yeah. Gene A. Butig, the league president. Oh, boy. Young Zach. 287 lifetime balls. That was in my high school senior yearbook page. Buried in balls in the hallway. That photo was for People magazine in, in uh, 1999. Did I, do you think I ever found out what made Zach tick? I mean, yeah. I don't think there's a clear there, There's a whole answer. other like weird part of me, which will be for, uh, for part Zach two. For Zach too, Zach is back. I keep oh, saying. yeah. Check out that GPA, right? <laughs> that always makes This just laugh. proves, kids, <clears throat> that good grades aren't necessary for success. I don't know. Look at it. You look bulky here. Man. I was, You're yeah. ripped. I, You're... I said I was six feet. I'm only really 5'11", so I exaggerated. Hey, round up. No round camera up. presence there either. No, like, let's go. How about some energy? Damn. Well, but look at that swing. You're getting a piece of it. I like I this was... last one gets caught. There it is. I was good, you guys. Like, I, I wasn't good enough to play Major League Baseball, but... I had some skills, you know. Unfortunately, my athletic peak was when I was about 16 years old. Really? Yeah. If it had been 12 years later, I'd I'd be worth half a billion dollars. But oh well. Well. That's my buddy Grant right there. Oh, I remember Grant. I got the better of him on that one, but he's made some amazing snags in Baltimore. Shout out to him. Okay, now this was uh, these are the Dave guys Davison I'm... out on Waveland Avenue. Yeah, I, I shot that separately. San Francisco. This is. <laughs> this was funny. I'm just standing here, like, put, putting up my hands, like, uh, I guess it cut off. Yeah. I didn't do it. Perfect positioning there. Look at that. Easy I mean, toss-up. When, when you Pittsburgh. edit these all together, it's just, it's crazy, the hyper edits. It's just like people are blown away by these. You're there, and you're there, St. and you're Louis, there. You're everywhere, right? Atlanta, D.C., Dodger Stadium. Hey, what do you do with 7,000 baseballs? I collect them. Is that? Yeah, it is weird. And weird is okay. So just so you guys know, and a lot of you guys who watch me for years do know this, but all these baseballs that you're seeing here, well, those are the commemorative balls. I keep those, but I've given away thousands of balls. So the, the barrels full of balls, you know, that's still only a, a fraction of what I've actually caught over the years. Shout out to my mom and, and my sister, Martha, that was taken in Japan. That's your sister, Martha. Half sister officially, but a full sister hey, at heart. Who's who's counting? I have two half sisters, and you know what? That makes one whole. Sister. There you go. Oh, uh, the pink ball for Mother's Day. That is a beautiful ball. Why don't they do more with the changing uh, different colors of the stitching in general? These commemorative balls. Other than the All Star Game, right? The stitches generally are always just red. Yeah, they experimented with some different colored stitches. Discontinued that. By the way, this is a little. That's that image behind Darren Ravel is a painting from his wedding. 
Doug Hakey, my friend, making it into that shot. That was Lanny's shot, right? Yes. In Baltimore. Oh, Alex Blandino's first major league home run and the third home run that I got that game, personal record. This sequence is so funny. It's Ravel, just a ball. Ravel is like, this is boring. And I'm like, this is the greatest thing ever. Well, what's interesting and he's is, like, you're lame. And I'm like, I'm the greatest. But if you guys follow Darren Ravel, like a lot of people do, he's obsessed with all kinds of different memorabilia. Now he's obsessed with collecting ticket stubs. Oh. Yeah. Everybody has different stuff they like. Barry Bonds, 724th career home run. Look at me with no hat. Doesn't happen often, so I hope you appreciate that. Did you? Did your hat get knocked off or you weren't wearing it? I don't think I was wearing I had the glasses, no hat. I just wasn't prepared. I don't know. Whatever. I try to maintain my baseball look normally. There oh, jeets. DJ. And that you were able to get the footage from this. Just love it. There I am coming down the stairs. If you watch that replay again, I have my backpack on my shoulder. I was standing in the tunnel at the top of the section. And I moved down 10 rows while that ball was in midair. This one it takes the cake for me. I don't know Beltron, if it's as September crazy as it looks, 28, but it looks like. Yeah, it was crowded as hell. So my hat got knocked off in this one. I have an amazing blog entry. Final day ever at Shea Stadium. The, and this, I will link to that blog entry in the description. And this shot that we're about to cut to, we zoom in on you. It looks like you're being baptized or something. I just love this. It there just it looks is. like you are like, oh. Yeah, you're speaking in <laughs> tongues or something. I don't know. It's That's the happiest I've ever been catching any baseball. More ha happier than A-Rod. Oh, yeah. Well, we don't want to spoil it. Spoiler alert, you caught A-Rod. Spoiler alert. Dose of it. Spoiler alert, I'm wearing a like this? double XL shirt here, and it looks ridiculous. <laughs> Do you like this? Uh, I like this kind of Americana jingle. Yeah, it's great. Jeff is a master storyteller. I am in awe. I mean, I think my own videos are pretty cool on YouTube, but they're like run and gun and yeah. churn them out quickly. They move at a good pace. But this is like true storytelling. Well, thank you. It's just a Ball grabbers, thing. read this. How'd you like that we found this? I mean, you, you must have found this because this is in your book, right? You yeah. About so this. I have a book called The Baseball, which talks all about baseballs, surprise, surprise. And there's a huge historical section about anecdotes and controversies. And I have a lot of this stuff in that book. I will link to that book on Amazon in case you want to pick up a copy or go check it out of a library and read it for free. And that one's still in print. Oh, yeah. Just Very the first book print. that's out of print. So when, when's your, your fourth book? Wait, I just got to say, Roger Maris' 61st home run, this catch, Sal Durante. It's unbelievable. He makes a barehanded catch. I always say, bring your glove. But, like, he was like, nah. Look at this guy. He's yeah. a stud, too. What he a just stud. Looks like he's that ball now would be worth more than a million dollars. For sure. But Sal's still alive, isn't he? I think so. Look at this guy. He's like a modern-day Sal Durante. And look at that, a grown man all tatted up, thrilled to catch a ball. Well, who, who doesn't like baseballs? How about this? We got the Sheen stuff. That you got this footage. Yeah, before the stadium in Anaheim was renovated. And then we filmed and this then, in, San yeah, in San Diego. in San Diego. Charlie Sheen just happened to be there pounding his chest. Fun like fact, I once got fired from a job at CBS because of Charlie Sheen. It wasn't really his fault, but he played a major role role in the weird circumstances that led to my demise okay this is one of my favorite sequences that i think we really needed in here and it was a little tricky to figure it out but i feel like when you're so obsessed with this thing that's such an object we have to figure out what is the origin of this object and me posing what the makes a baseball where do they come from zach you have this amazing npr kind of documentary voice well, so that is filmed in the hallway outside of my childhood bedroom. But this part is filmed in Now, Costa you didn't Rica. film that. I didn't film this one. It was filmed by but we acquired the rights someone to else the footage for, for ESPN. The Rawlings Baseball Factory in Costa Rica. And I didn't film this either, but this is what it looks like. This yeah, is, I was there, can confirm. Is that you in that? It looks like OJ in the Bronco. I took that photo. Okay. No official address. One Rawlings Street, maybe? I took that photo. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. Like, people do not get to visit the factory. I went because I was working on this book, and I had a contract to write the book with Random House, and I, I went to the office of the commissioner of Major League Baseball to interview 
uh, the, the president of licensing for MLB at the time, Howard Smith, and he offered to help me get to the factory. It's not open to the public. And from the time that he said that I could visit the factory, it still took a year because of the logistics and the paperwork and the legality and just like, it was crazy. And prior to my going to the factory, the last journalist that had been there was seven years earlier for the Boston Globe. Well, th these were, I think ESPN commissioned these shots for right. promos for opening day 2014, I believe. Right, I was there in 2010. So, but I, I understand that there was a seven year gap in between any journalist or reporter being there. And here we go into some of your big highlight moments. And this is another one that is... Look at my trophies in the background. Yeah, what is that? Best swimmer? What, what are we doing? No, those are baseball. It's, of course. Oh, Who is it? My one true love. My Trouty. trout. So... Look at me climbing back over should I, should row I make of seats a, to make that catch. Should I make a reference to the, the wet shorts? Yeah, you can. <laughs> Zach has always been very self-conscious of the... Oh, he photoshopped it. Shorts. I think we cleaned it up a little cleaned bit. Cleaned it up. But he was worried it looked like he peed his pants. But he claims it was just water that he poured on him. Yeah, um, I have a shirt on my head because it was 108 degrees that day and humid. And I was drenched in sweat. So it looks like I peed my pants. And uh, Jeff was nice enough to make it look like I didn't. I now, do, yeah. This blows me away because it's, it's as if you're willing this to happen. And I, I go into this later in the video. How do you, like, will a ball into your glove? But it almost seems like it where you're, like, talking into this plane of just, like, hey, my, do it. There's my friend Benny and Garrett in the background there. Well, I've also tried to will a thousand other balls into my glove, and it hasn't worked. But hey, uh, You don't have to have a 100% track record. Does he get the ball? Oh, he gets the ball. So... I wrote a blog entry about that game when I caught Trout's first home run. I will link to that in the description. All the supplemental material. So many links. So there's Trout's parents right here. I'm going into the tunnel with them. I think his mom's name is Debbie? I don't know. I've never it's read It's in the blog it. entry. So yeah, there it is. Mike Trout's parents. And do you know where the ball is now? I'm, still a vis I mean, I assume he has it. Right? But I, I remember I told security at the time, yes, I'll give him the ball. And then when Trout's parents saw me, they were like, there is the ball. Six-figure ball, more like a seven-figure ball. But they were like, oh, we heard you're going to, you know, give give back the ball. Like, we're so happy. Could we get it from you now? And I was like, well, I'd really just love to hold on to it till the end of the game and appreciate it. It was the eighth inning when I caught it. So. And here's more commentators who somehow know your name. And the one other guy is blown away. Shout out this. to Benny Bang Bang for taking these photos down in the uh, tunnel. Are you serious? I'm dead. And now here you are with Jonathan Fader. Yep. Now th this Get is one of the most head. fascinating things to me is because I'm fascinated by obviously interesting people who live differently, but psychologically, what drives you to, to do these things and to act so differently? And I think he, he really, I was really impressed with his insight into, you know, how your mind works based on you basically being, having the psyche as an athlete. Also, look at me wearing a collared shirt. That doesn't happen very often. Why is that? You're a t-shirt guy. I'm a t-shirt guy. Now, now you filmed it. this at the Home Run Derby in Cincinnati in 2015. I did. Look at this guy. <laughs> I by, was... the, by the way, I got a free ticket to that from the Yankees as part of the deal for giving A-Rod the 3,000 hit baseball. Home Run Derby and All-Star Game tickets I just love year. this with you. Because you look so, and the music too, it feels so serious, but you have a Homer Simpson shirt on. and, and Well, Homer, because home run derby, Homer, yeah. So smart. But also it pops out on TV. But what a cool artsy shot, my God. I know, I, lo I love, this is my footage I love, because it also illustrates all the things you're talking about. Also, that Reds hat is getting a lot of play. And then this stuff. So this is that slow-mo stadium. stuff later, but we'll talk about that coming up. It just this uh, is the tears my guts out, man. And here's an interesting thing. Cut away. Watch the next shot here. The, this one, we cut to that. This is 2012, different time. Oh, I was like, yeah, I don't remember you going getting on a that boat shit. for that shot. I shot at a different time. You shot that? I did. You were in Cincinnati yes, without I me. I was. I was. Wow. I've been to a lot of places without you. Oh look, I feel like oh. I might have had a play on that, but I didn't want to reach right up in those people's faces. Like it was, I don't know. And you just, just mentioned like, Cincinnati in that voiceover a year before we were shooting. Oh, that. boy. This is the best. This visual. Judge is, Rob, I'm in the yellow. And uh, this is, to me, it's whoop. such a great image. 
and all the faces. And we have a photo of this, and it's a famous photo. But all these save faces, water, drink look beer. Look at these faces. It's I so got so expensive. much hate for that. I had to block about 250 people on Twitter that night because everybody was coming at me. I mean, that's the versus the world part that's of this. It. Film. This is my favorite shot. I love this. So smooth. I just went out in the hall and I just shot it on slow mo uh, down the tunnel. So that's where I was standing when Jeter hit that home run, and then I scooted on down the stairs. The intensity here. You are. I hope it comes through because you are intense, especially when there's a moment coming. Yeah, up. I mean, I'm always super focused. Yeah. And you just have to always be ready. Any moment you're like this next pitch, this next ball could come flying in my direction. Oh, so I know. I, like, I will tell people it's fun to film zone. with you at games, but there's not a lot of downtime because nope. you always have to be ready nope. just in case. And sometimes you go the whole game and nothing comes. Oh. and. I tell friends not to go to baseball games with me. They're like, we should hang out at a baseball game. It's like, if you want to hang out, it should not be at a baseball game. Well, Heath Bell says that later in here, too, about Oh, yeah, that's talking true. And telling a story, and then you're just gone. But look at that. Look, look at Look how eyes. serious. Why is I, I look sad, probably, because nobody had hit a baseball to me for the last three minutes. Yeah, I, my heart starts racing. I think I can hear it. Is that boom, your boom, heart? Boom, boom. There's that Reds cap. Oh, well, Cincinnati is near and dear to your heart, right? Yes, it is. I set my one-game record. Now, this you filmed this yeah. during a game just to get some random shot of me sitting there, and then Didi Gregorius happened to hit a game and home it, run. It, you know, it's not in focus perfectly, but it feels like kind of it's dreamlike. dreamlike. And I Jinx. caught that one. Okay, and this is... Now, this is where the movie really kicked off. Because as we said, we, I started filming you in 2014, but we, we might have thought it was going to be part of something else. Or we didn't think it was just going to be about you, but... But then when this happened, it's then, like, yeah, I'm sorry, your whole film has to be about me. So there's well, JV just, with Detroit, first pitch, 95 miles per hour, fastball, belt high, outside corner. And I was like, hmm, I think being in right field is probably a good move for A-Rod. He likes to go oppo, short look at, porch. Look at, the, uh, look at the optimism on his face there. And I'm in the olive green shirt on the stairs. No way. Yes way, Jeffrey. Well, I mean. Don't doubt me. When I was, well, the real story was I was at home and I got a text from a friend and they, he said, oh my God, A-Rod, 3,000th hit, Zach's just caught it. I said, you are, you got to be kidding me. Also, a guy jumped out of the bleachers on that one. <laughs> really? Watch, watch, watch. He jumps. Oh, this guy. Woo. Yeah. yeah, that's, I still can't believe that that happened. So these shots were recreated because we I, we went to a game later. That's which, my apartment, by the way. All that, and we'll go into that more in more detail. Your pillow pile, but we went to go recreate this. So I had you wear the same thing. And then yeah. while we were recreating it, and he That's was getting some shots of me sitting there. Didi Gregorius hit a game home run to me, which I caught. So yeah, I'm olive green shirt. But this is what a lot of people don't realize. You actually didn't catch the ball. You just Yeah, I don't like it, it when people talk about me catching the 3,000th hit. I'm like, I didn't catch anything. I picked it up off the ground. But there was some weird something where it, it ended so there, up right yeah. next And all me. these guys were looking in the wrong spot. So that's a recreation also. <laughs> yes. But we try to... So look, I get the ball, and they're still looking on the ground behind me. Those guys... And then this guy comes to your support. That was really dumb for me to hold it up in the air. Someone could have tried to snatch it out of my hands. Well, remember, and then that guy who comes down, who goes, oh, this guy, the mean guy from behind you in a minute. Yeah, that guy grabbed me by the shoulders, and I clutched well, the that ball. Guy, that guy He seems, was cool. He's cool. They're all cool. It's this other guy who comes. I think he's wearing tell. a red hat, right? Yeah, I think so. And I love this, too, because Alex does the tip of the hat. And then you do your tip of the head. <laughs> and it's almost like these parallel things going on on the field and in the stadium. Here we go. How it happened. Yep. Are and even sure? since filming that interview, I'm still in a state of disbelief. So wait, are we going to see the, the red hat yeah, guy yeah. getting in my face? Yeah. You've watched this film... Ad infinitum. A hundred times in various I mean, bits and pieces. when you make it, you have to keep watching it over and over and over. Here's the red hat guy. But you'll see him better on this other shot. Security was like, who got it? And I'm like, I got it. Hmm. Hmm. And then I love this. 
<laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, Rovell, you like that? You like that, Darren? Oh, here's Red Hat guy. This He's guy is so furious. He looks like what does he say? This guy? I don't know what he said. I think I he mean, says this guy or that guy guy. He, he wasn't he wasn't trying to claim that it was his or No, that no, but I think he was like just was, upset and offended by your presence. I think so. As some people are. Yeah. I mean it was it was a clean snag, like went over my head, nobody caught it. I looked down and picked it. Like I did there was no wrestling involved, thankfully. Yeah. Can you imagine if a lightning bolt came out of the ceiling and disintegrated it? You still would have been the one to catch it, but it's true. Now I love these shots because that's again, a recreation. This, this is for, that's the DD ball. That's why you're so happy. Yeah. And it was like, but it looks like it's that the right moment. So, so there's a little, you know, a little little movie magic. So that is the real ball in this shot, and I'm like carefully putting it in my hand before I shake a hand. You can see the ball has the authentication sticker right. by that point. I'd gone underneath the stands for an hour, and so there's no authentication sticker in that shot. Because that was before. That was when I first caught it. All right, now here's the, so the I'm montage. A, so I'm a douchebag because I said I was keeping it. And, I mean, what was it like? I mean, obviously you get this ball. And, and I, I always think about – there's a chapter or a section in your book about what to do if you catch a milestone home run ball. And the team tries to get it back from you. So when the Yankees realize it was you, they must have just Oh, been, this guy is the worst. You're the worst! Russo? You are a bum! All right, let's all be nice. We no, I'm not going to be nice to him. How about he's, Francesa? I mean, he's sort of a doofus, but Mike, uh, the mad dog is actually a bad person, and I'll go on camera saying that. He sucks. Yeah, so this was just nuts. <laughs> I think that TV interview has like 10 million views on YouTube, like Inside Edition or something. Give that, me a break. That's the Today Show? This, I, I don't know. I, I did like 16 interviews in the first 24 hours. Now, this guy's got No, quotes. I don't bulldoze little kids. It's never happened. There's no evidence. That is phony. Fake news? It's misinformation, and it's a shame that people All get right. Now, I love that. this because... I called you up after you caught the 3,000th hit, and I said, uh, let's expand this documentary. And you invited me over and during those two weeks, and you had it stored in your Arkanoid video yeah, game. Yeah, had it locked up in the coin door. And I love this, because interview to me, this part is just so... I, I love this section, because it shows all the people asking you the questions, and you're answering to me, but not to them. It's, you're just kind of sitting there thinking. Also... This was a live sports center interview with two hours of sleep. So I was absolutely zonked. I was not sleeping at all for like two weeks. <clears throat> so I feel like I look younger now all these years later than I did on live TV at the time and at the press conference, just bags under my eyes. I just love how, I mean, you. I know you can't make this up because the way that you are just celebrating this, this baseball and, and just the love for this, the passion for this ball, it's just dripping out of you here. I love it. Yep, that was fun. Being in the driver's seat, baby. But I, I really just wanted to keep the ball. I still wish that I had it. I mean, I'm glad about how it ultimately turned out, which we'll get to, but uh, a lot of grief. Well, wow, that's true. Oh, how about this? Oh, A Rod, I, I, I can't have sympathy for A Rod. He was very nice to me at the time, but uh, now, where do you think the ball is now? He said he was going to give it to his daughters and let them argue about whose room it would be in. Mwah. Well, then you should have hit a single, A Rod, if you wanted the ball so much. <laughs> but he ended up getting it back. Spoiler alert. Now, interestingly... Oh, I was at that game. Yeah. I was so upset to not catch that one. I was right near where that ball landed for Jeter's first at bat. There was an empty seat, and then the people showed up for their seats, and I had to move. I might have actually caught that ball with a slightly different twist of fate. I think this is a good point right here that I make. Yeah. Well, it's just 
people can do whatever they want, but the fact that whatever you do, people are going to be coming after you. Oh my God, what if I drop the A-Rod ball in with the others? How would I tell it apart? It's got a sticker and an R1. That's how about true. that too, that when they mark these up... Look how tired I am here. I was dead. I look like I'm actually dead. What were we saying? I was just saying that, how about it that it was the first marked ball that they put into play and that, that he hit yeah. out too. First pitch, first that's, inning. That's a rarity, I think. Yep. So that's a recreation. You can see there's no R1 on the ball. Hey, don't ruin the magic. How about that when it... Mm. Mm. Now that shirt too. You, oh, he's got a hole my shorts. In it. My shorts are a little wrinkled there. Yeah. But the shirt is that U two tour shirt. And I went to that U two. Oh, here like we go. That became. Ooh, cover your ears. There's bad language. Well, <laughs> I mean, you know, this is the bullying that goes on on social media, and this is what people talk about when they talk about the fact that the there's no decorum anymore. And. You look so sad there. Uh, I can I can scoot forward. I've, I've been hunching over this whole video. Posture. I feel like we're hosting like the high school morning news here. Despite the Washington Nationals ejecting me for a game because they accused me of selling baseballs in 2012, and yes, I'm still. Yo, pissed so about why? That. Why? How do all these bad things keep coming about? Negativity sells, and uh, that gets the clicks. Now this is the DD ball again, but yeah, and there's the Reds hat again. <laughs> Man, you just can't move on. And this is a uh, Kansas City Royals. I guess so. <laughs> yeah, it, of course. It would make you sad if you sold it for a hundred million, just because you couldn't have it anymore. Yeah, I still miss that ball. But you know, you, you a hundred million would be a lot. Hundred million would be pretty good. Oh, this is funny. This was true. We're just doing an impromptu interview, and and your phone kept ringing, and it was yeah. the Yankees. <laughs> now, kids, don't repeat all the cursing that you're hearing. Anymore. Or repeat it, but know your audience. Okay, that's fair. My favorite. Well, another story. But yeah, this was July third, twenty fifteen. Great blog entry about this day with the press conference. I'll link to that in the description. Wow. And yet I still get hateful comments from people telling me to give A-Rod his ball. Really? Yeah, and I just linked an article to them. People are uninformed. Well, you know, 98% of the media coverage happened the first day after I had tweeted that I was keeping the ball. And all the people that said that I was a jerk and selfish, like they didn't do follow-up pieces to be like, you know what, our bad. He actually did a cool thing, and we we want to like no. It's just like That's all that all that negativity that was put well, out there. There you are with the check into the world. Yeah. So talk about this is an important thing. Pitching for baseball is this great charity. Now it's officially called Pitching for Baseball and Softball. And we wanted to do something with this film, and we're going to give part of the proceeds from this film to that great charity. To the as charity. Well. And you've got a long-standing relationship with them. Yeah, I started working with them in 2009. And um, they basically provide baseball and softball equipment to underserved children and communities all over the world. Uh, in simple terms, they help kids play ball. So I love supporting them. Yeah. And uh, yeah, if you need extra motivation to, uh, to watch this movie, some of that money is going to be going to the charity and helping kids get out there onto the field. So yeah, this is, uh, I guess that's the DD ball, right? Yeah, I wouldn't have let someone hold uh, How the How did this guy ball. get this camera in? I thought they won't let anything. Was he I think He was credentialed somehow, Japanese media. Okay, now talk about this. To tell the truth? Like, <laughs> you're, tell you, the you truth. have this crazy history of being a guest on all these wild I've been on shows. two game shows now. We didn't get the second one in because it was the just The Jay Leno one? Yeah. But... Uh, like to tell the truth, in... this was filmed in L.A. in the year 2000, I think. They flew me out. But how did they pick you to be the guy who, who it's about? Like, the other two were the fake Zacks, and you were the real Zach. I mean, they look for people with interesting stories who aren't that well-known. Hmm. And certainly... All right, now we got to talk about Conan. Conan. This was the short-lived Conan hosting The Tonight Show. I'm glad I helped see... ruin Conan's Whoa. stint as The Tonight Show hey, host. I, I used to work intern at Conan, and I... I... I know you didn't love how this went, but I, I like. I think Conan. He was he was not nice. 
He was not nice. He cut me off. He made fun of me. Even when I had told his segment producer ahead of time, there's one thing I'd love to talk about, and it's the charity. She's like, oh, we'll make sure that Conan asks you about it. When I brought it up, he just cut me off and made fun of me. Well, I think there's this dynamic, too, because him and Jeff Garland go way back to being roommates in Chicago, and they're like, they knew each other years ago when they were coming up, and then you're suddenly there, and they just, you're in the middle of them, and it's like they start kind of teaming up on you. I mean, I think they're trying to have fun, but I, you know, I don't really think he thinks you're the worst man. Yeah. I mean, so that was, that was basically the year that I started doing the charity thing. And I hadn't yet really started doing this full time as a career. So if you're just, if you're just being interviewed, yeah, haha. If you're just being interviewed as this insane hobbyist, that doesn't carry as much weight as like, no, actually it's my full time living you know? I love this. This is amazing. Jay it's, was cool. It's again, you and Dana Carvey and Leno. And I know they're kidding around too, but Dana Carvey, come on. One of the all-time greats. I love him. But I, I like didn't... the impression he does for you too. Hey, hey you catch too, too many, many balls. balls. <laughs> Maybe we'll get a tweet from Dana. Yeah. Um... But I didn't handle myself well on uh, Conan. You know, I just, I wasn't as media savvy then. You know, I was much newer to being on cameras. And I, they were making fun of me and I, I stooped to that level. And it, yeah, it was, it was bad. So I would do a lot better now if I ever get that chance again. <laughs> Playing with his balls. <laughs> yeah, it's hey, me. I love to play with my it. balls. I know it. Also, fun fact, when I'm, on TV in studio, there's so many bright lights that they always make me turn my baseball cap around so well, there's not a shadow. As you can see there, well, we, on it's my okay face. for here, but I mean, it's there's okay a little for bit of here, a shadow from the bill. The crazy. I just want the real Zach. I don't want a fake Zach. Now this is this is where I feel like the movie really takes off because so much coverage of you is just about the baseball stuff. Here I am, bearded. But to me, this is where we really start getting an insight into who you are as a person and you're you, you're you're not just this baseball guy you're a, a very multifaceted fascinating individual as we're about to see about some of the other quirks that you have in your life I mean, look at that wallpaper jeez look at this rubber band ball 280 wow that thing is now 346 pounds hey do we have to make you feel bad Maybe it's trying to drop a few, but it's got a metabolism. <laughs> it's gravitationally challenged. Yeah. I was the superstar of show and tell in school. But where do you get rubber bands that are this big now? Are they, like, how does this... I specially order them, actually. From, from where? Uh, there's a company in Pennsylvania or New Jersey, and there's another small distributor in New York where I get the colored ones. Now, this wallpaper is Look, wild. I put myself on my wall. That's fun. Well, that is fun. But we're sitting in your apartment right now recording this, and I'm still, I've come here quite a bit over the years. I'm still a little bit, like, I don't know where to look. It just draws yeah, your attention. it's interesting. I do love all the facial expressions, though. It's all people and faces, basically. Yeah, I did my college dorm rooms like that. If you go to my website, zachhample.com, and click the photos link at the top, ooh, that cover your sexy. eyes, children. Oh, my God. We can show all kinds of murders on TV, but... Heaven forbid children might see a nipple. Hey, there's no nipples in this, okay? Would you like there to be some nipples? <laughs> Do we want some nipples in this YouTube video? That's inappropriate. Now, Maria contextualizes this well because I think she's the straight woman in this coming into this uh, crazy apartment. Now, if you guys ever come to Zach's apartment, and use that bathroom, you'll notice my card is among them. I need a Maria Marino card. You do? I do. So it took me about two months. To do all the cards? Wait, what did I say here? Did said, I say that I'm the world record holder? You're about to. I have the world record in that. See, I know the whole movie. He, yeah, I, I've only seen this in little bits and pieces a few times, but... Scrabble. Now, how about yeah. Wordle? Oh, that's a... Uh, yeah, I, I actually, yeah, I got the Wordle in two guesses uh, yesterday. I got to play it today. This look is why at, I shave my head. Look how bald I am. Like, I'm this in, is in college? I'm in college, and I am already have, like, an old man hairline. Male pattern baldness. You know, luckily, I'm, I have a good head, and I'm just so handsome otherwise that... 
How did that happen? I'm glad this made it in there because, yeah. yeah. You do live a unique existence. Oh, yeah, the VHSs. I, mean, I was going to say, it took me two months to put the business card wallpaper up and another two months to do all the magazine wallpaper. I want to see you just fighting technology. I've been reading my old journals lately, and I'm reading 1997 right now, and I'm making keeping a list of all the old weird technology. Oh, yeah? Did yeah, browsing, browsing Netscape for web pages. I called radio stations to figure out what songs were. Hey, I've I had there was no Shazam too. back in the day. There was a time before people that. were using beepers. There were fax machines. Anyway, now look at this pillow pile. Uh, I mean, this is the look. Pillows, my, my belly the wall, is sweaty there. And the wallpaper. Oh no! Did you pee yourself again? You should have photoshopped that out. Also, I have a okay. Oh, now, it's the girlfriend section. We gotta talk about your love life a little bit. There's Amy. There's Allie. There's Jess. Jess again at Disney. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's things. Jonah at PNC Park. Now, Jonah got a shout out on Conan. As That's we right. Just heard. My girlfriend Jonah. There's Caitlin at an '80s themed party. Robin, still in touch with some of these folks. Well, hopefully Jonah they're... and I after skydiving. There's a video of me skydiving. There's Haley, some friends in the pillow piles. I was not dating any of them. That's okay. There's uh, me and Robin look again. Look at that facial hair. Look at look at the goatee. Jonah and I in Putnam Valley, New York, in a rowboat. I think that was her first time rowing. How about this? That was at uh, my cousin Nico's birthday party, I guess. Me and Jonah. And my mom. Here she is, finally, the great Naomi. So shout out to all my ex-girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> and now, I met your mom, interestingly, that first game we ever met at in 2008. Which was astounding. Uh, so I feel like I've known her for a long time. But I thought she was a great interview. And there's such an interesting angle on you, obviously. such a cl Someone so close to you for so long who watched you emerge as this person that you've become. I, like, I think Jared really contextualized a lot of stuff well here. Jared is a wise individual. He's, he's young, too. Younger than me. So now, where's wait, this what bobblehead? Did she say? Thing? You created a job that didn't even exist. Okay, yeah. Because one thing about this film is that a lot of it was filmed before I really took off on YouTube. So I think Jared Diamond is talking about like how I have all this leisure time and people can resent that, but it's like people, this is actually my job now, and I work so hard at it. Yeah, and so, we talk about that a lot. Yeah, but I, yeah, but, but and I I did well because I I don't I want people to think that I just like. Oh, found this guy on YouTube and then said, let's make a documentary about him. He's got a massive following. No, when, when we no, met no, no, no. you, you had a following. You had done a lot. You had 3,000 something balls, but you were not this phenomenon that you are now. Got to get the right banana. Yeah, I love, they all kind of look similar. <laughs> you don't try to Jeffrey, be I don't want a curved banana, okay? Oh, all right. No curved bananas here. I, I think this section is really important too, though, um, because we're seeing... All these things that, you know, I feel like you don't feel any pressure to partake in a lot of the, the normal stuff. It blows me away still, if we glossed over it, that you've never had Coca-Cola in your life. And you've never been drunk in your life. I mean... Shout out to Tony Dunlap standing <laughs> to my... Just behind my right elbow in that photo, so on the left. I think it's telling that you don't feel that you're missing out and you want to know what that experience is like. Even just once so you get it but you'd rather stick with your kind of record and your streak and go, I don't even want to do it because I've gone this far. Yeah, I, I cannot, I just, I can't, oh, that was a shot right there. It hit the top. <laughs> well, so when I said I hit the top of the gym, I was imagining myself playing baseball at my former summer camp, Manitou Wobbing in McKellar, Ontario, and there was a gym beyond the left field fence and it was a blast to get there. So oh. I was, so I was imagining like, oh, that one hit the top of the gym. Oh, you never I, knew that, did you? I didn't. I'm learning new oh, things. Oh, Donald now. and David Sterrett, at, my friends. Look at those cheeks. That's fifth grade. Cheeky. I'm still in touch with uh, David. Donald, not so much. I would love to be back in touch with him. Maybe this movie will and I'm friends. And I'm friends with their mom also on Facebook. That ball says BH on it, if you can see it, because that was from the Boise it, Hawks. But let's listen to what you're saying here, because this is... Uh, 
uh, you know, when I started doing this, I, I didn't know what I was going to find. You never know when you start talking to someone. But this is really emotional stuff about talking about, you know, yeah. how you were treated as a kid and, and kids chanting derogatory things to you all in unison. I mean, that's traumatic, obviously. Yeah. I got made fun of so badly in middle school. And yet there's still all these middle school idiots out there that still try to bash me on social media. Wait. People from your middle school or middle school age No, people now? who are now, like, I'm dealing with all these kids out there oh. that are just like, you're gay and, like, like you're an idiot and get a life. And it's like, I thought I got all of that stuff over with, like, 30-plus years uh, ago. You know, some so, things never change. I think middle school is a rough age for people. Middle school sucks. Anybody out there watching this, if you're not getting along with other kids, don't worry about it because kids are idiots, and when you get older, it gets better. Now, how about this? We don't go Not into... Not all kids are idiots. There are many wonderful kids, and to the wonderful people out there. We don't go into detail, but this is about the Fort Bragg game. This is what you did here when people get so mad at you. Yes, yeah, so... So I was wondering, why, why didn't we go into the Fort Bragg game? Well, at the beginning, when it happened, you didn't seem super keen on reliving it at the moment. And then later, I think you kind of... Everything blew over, but... Look... You know, you try to tell as much as you can, but you can't go into every story. But you talked about, yeah, you showed how people wanted to have me banned from Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. And and now here we are. We're trying to show all sides here. I mean, this is That's people... the obnoxious side. Yeah. But hey, why is it okay for Fernando Tatis Jr. to act like a hot dog, but I can't? I don't think it's okay for anybody to. Oh, act like I don't like that before. showy stuff. Now, this is very telling. You're Uh-oh. There he is. Marlon's man. I made a short documentary about Marlon's oh, man. Oh, Marlon's man. Another very famous fan, very recognizable. He and I used to be cool, and then he decided that he hated me. What's that all about? But, you know, it's important to have his negative perspective because that fuels the versus the world portion of this story. So, yeah, well, we're not trying so to So thank you, it. Marlon's man, for being mean to me. We actually made peace a few years ago. Okay, like, good. But he's, I mean, you know. All right. See, you're giving it away to kids. Listen. As, as, the, as the great Mitch Hedberg said, you can't please all the people all the time. And last night, all those people were at my show. But you're not <laughs> going to ever get everybody to like you. And we say that in here. Heat says it. You're, not everybody's going to like you all the time. But I don't know. I, I hope that this film, you're never going to get everyone to like you. But I hope that people watch it, even people who might think, oh, I don't like that guy I heard bad Look how sad that this guy. kid was that I caught that ball, right? Oh, yeah. This, this was fun. Uh. <laughs> some of these are so over the top, they're almost funny. I, yeah, so some of this hate was from Fort Bragg, which, you know, I wrote a whole journal entry about, a yeah. blog entry about that, which I'll link to. Um, we could have talked about it in, in the film. It would have been fine. I guess, like you said, you just can't cover everything. But you, you sure as hell covered all the hate from it. Look, uh, I, I mean, I wasn't trying to make a fluff piece. Some people don't like you, and I think we have to go into that. More than some, unfortunately. Okay. But look, I really think I wanted to make something, and it's my true belief. Some people are confused. Some people don't know how they feel. Some people think they don't like you. But I think if they actually, and we go into this, if they meet you in real life, I think they're going to have a different appreciation. Or if they have an in-depth thing, when you reduce everything to sound bites only, you know, it makes things seem very simple and oversimplified. And you're a complex person. And now this was right after the A-Rod. Yeah, this was right after the A-Rod, so people were all pissed. Oh, God, that guy was such a putz. This is important. It's a lose-lose. Yeah, it's lose lose, but whatever. It, yeah, yeah, I I get that, and yet, it, it's interesting how all the the people who really bash me the most on social media about how I'm so awful to kids are adults. You come and watch me at a baseball game, and I am surrounded by dozens, if not hundreds, of kids every day who all want selfies and autographs and they do I, I will say over the journey of making this over the years it went from five people at the beginning who who maybe recognized you me being one of them at the first game yeah to now it is like the equivalent of like 
you know, Tom Cruise walking into a, a baseball stadium. I mean, you know, there's this whole internet secondary world. Yeah, there's the virtual world, there's, there's online, and that's, that's not reality. But anybody who's seen me at a game in person, you, you can see how people actually feel, so. But there's just this, I mean, it's it's this whole YouTube famous thing, which is like, or internet famous or social media famous. And it's real. I mean, when you go to a game with you, it is astounding when you see the the actual real reactions. Because a lot of these kids do. I think it's funny and important to point out. They probably never met like a celebrity. You're the first famous person they've ever experienced in real life. And they're just like, oh, my God, they came alive out of my screen. And I think it's cool. All right. So that's me. Do you still have that uh, tricycle? That's actually how I go to Yankee Stadium. <laughs> you should. Hunter Pence used to ride his scooter, and, and I ride this little plastic motorcycle. So. Oh, look how cool my apartment looks. <laughs> There's a few. Um, Me and my dad, Stu. The great Stu Hample. Go- I never Google met him. Stu. He's got a Wikipedia page. S-T-O-O was his pen name. Stu Hample. He was 51 when I was born. So, my dad was born in 1926. His mom, my grandmother, was born in 1897. Can you believe that? So, any of you who talk to me, you can take some weird pleasure in knowing that you're talking to someone who's talked to someone who was born in the 1800s. How about that? That's a good little bit of trivia. And where this is how this is filmed on Shelter Island. Yeah. On Westmoreland Drive. So that is my dad. So, but why is that Stu S T U? Well, that's I mean that's his birth name, Stuart. But then, as he started to publish some books, and he became a humorist and an illustrator and a cartoonist, he changed it to S T O O. Look, my name is Zachary Z A C H A R Y. Z A C H. Do not say but that. But I spell Zach Z A C K. Well, it's just like someone named Thomas will probably drop the H and be T O M, right? Probably. And someone named William is going to go by Bill. They changed their name altogether. So leave me alone, people, if I want to spell Zach, C-A-C-K. My dad was insane. I, I wish I and, got to meet him. You know, in I don't know how I didn't. <laughs> there he is. I think people are going to think he's actually British. No, not at all. It's tough being British in America. There he, there he is doing an old Jewish But guy. I don't hear his re- What's his real voice? I can't. I don't think it's ever in here. Oh, is it not? I think so. That's look at him as there a young. Is. I like sailor. how you got the edges of the photo in there. Yeah, just and look at this editing. whole background it's on. Look at those chipped railings at Shea Stadium. What a dump! Oh, that I remember place that. Was. God, those bo- those boxes. And that now, kid is, behind me had a Mizuno glove. That's also. Westfield, New Jersey, the baseball field. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Oh, I miss my dad. He died in 2010. So he knew that my third book the baseball was going to be published he didn't live long enough to see it published he was 84 when he died now what do you think but he didn't live to see me being a youtuber or to see this documentary what do you think he would have thought about this film uh you can be honest he would have hated it he would have oh shout out to lou cohen my grandfather your other grandfather my other grand my mother's father yes he was born in 1903 on july 4th and my mom by the way being filmed here in her autograph department at the Argosy bookstore. Yes. My dad would have just, uh, to use a, a Yiddish word, been plotzing over yeah. all of this. Would he have thought I was a mensch? Oh, totally. Oh, good. A starker, too. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So now, the Argosy bookstore, by the way, and I'll, I'll link to the Argosy in the description. Are you, I feel like, who's, am I going to have to watch this, this whole video again to make, I wish I had paper to write down all the things that I said I would mention. Mm. Max, are you were taking notes on that? <laughs> Why don't you give it to him? Shout out to Max, my intern. You the man. Now, I got to say, I haven't come back since we filmed at the store, but it's been on my list because I really want to go as an actual yeah, patron. Everybody and- should go and visit this place. It occupies all of a six-story building. There it is on East 59th Street. Um, and you can probably, you can maybe even say hello to you or Naomi. I'm not mom. there much. Like at the time when this was filmed, I was still working there a little bit to supplement the baseball stuff, which was be- there. I am working in the autograph department. I don't work there anymore. But your mom. Your so here aunt. she is saying that you know her great assistant is her son. But yeah, if you go to the Argosy, you might even see my mom. 
My mom is still very much alive, very healthy, and she is so psyched about this film. And this is... That's in Zabar's, I Zabar's, believe. Zabar's. Come to Zabar's. Check out the jams. Oh, do you see that filmmaking? Went all the way in on my wow. dark sleeve, and it just... Natural cut. That was in a hotel room in San Diego. It was. We were there when we were the there for the All Star festivities. Oh, my old website. Boy, I, was that ugly. You can probably find it on the Wayback Machine. Now, I will say, if I can criticize a oh, little bit. Oh, lay it on me. Be, be the versus the world. I'm, I'm well, <laughs> I, I was astounded by the fact that you keep these lists not in, like, Excel or a spreadsheet program where you can tally them up, but you're manually adding I'm things. I'm old school. I fight technology, remember? I heard. But, like, this is just Excel. I still do it Google that way. Google Sheets would do this for you. What do you want for from you? me? What do you want from me? Nothing. I'm just... You That's on you. the ferry to Shelter Island with my parents. Cavaliers was an after-school sports group where I played. That photo was taken in Canada at my summer camp, Manitou Wabing. I had no there. idea. That makes me and see very this in a whole different light. Oh, so that on the right is my grandmother who was born in 1897, Helen Hample. She lived to be 102. She lived from 1897 until the year 2000. How about that? Parts of three different centuries. That's wild. I didn't realize yep. that. So this was filmed in Philadelphia. What? Yes. Now I'm getting yes, my all aunt, the insight. My Aunt Barbara, that's a self-portrait that my dad drew. My Aunt Barbara had a place in Philadelphia. Oh, and, really? And we would go down and, and visit them. And now we were saying this, but... Look at those nice big commemorative logos. Updating my blog. I don't blog any... I'd have been to 52 stadiums at the time. Now you're at 61, or is that out there? 61. All right, well, when's 62 coming? I don't know if there are going to be any new stadiums this year, but part of the new collective bargaining agreement, MLB is going to be playing games all over the place. Uh, they're going to be playing a game in Paris, I think, in 2025. No. So that means you'll be They're there. going to go to Mexico City every year for a few years. That'll be new. They're going to do Asia. They didn't say where. Well, you've already been they're, to they are the going to Tokyo, do Tokyo Dome. You've been to Australia. You've been to London, all for MLB games. Also, I have to give a shout-out coming soon. I forget exactly where. You, there, Carlos, my doorman. He is so cool. From Peru. Inca power, as he always says. He's a good Love guy. that guy so much. He's the best. So, what yeah, he's, he's still working here at the building five nights a week, so I see him all the time. Those guys were bashing me standing outside the stadium. Yeah. And I went and talked, and I was like, hey, what, what's all this about? There's Prince Fielder's kid, right? Yeah. Um... And they were just like chirping at me and I was like, well, hey, how about this? How about this? How about this? And I, I changed their perspective and we were shaking hands by the end. Now, I like Troutnet. I like that the stadium security. Oh, that girl made a nice catch on that she one. She did. Yep. A barehanded snag. Hey, and you're, you're not going to, I mean, you got to give credit where credit's due and you do. Yeah, I'll. All this stuff about me being accused of knocking kids down. I am recognized everywhere by everyone in stadiums, including security, and, and none of them have a problem with me. So as I said in the film, like if I were being aggressive, you'd think there'd be some sort of repercussion. Talk about this. Hey, you're the guy that gets all the balls. That was a year before he was kind of snotty to me in Cincinnati, but he was cool to me there. He's thrown me a few balls. I mean, it yeah. is. And it's interesting that Heath said that that many players during his career Even knew, knew me because they, they his, career, his career was winding down before the YouTube stuff took off. Yeah. Yeah, it's... And oh, Shane you filmed Gurney. that? Yeah. We, th that was the day that I caught Stephen... Yep. Not caught, but picked up Stephen Matz's first career home run. Yeah. I hate that there's a universal DH now. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's occurred to me that, uh, there's going to be a whole crop of major league players coming up. There I am with Heath in his suite at the all-star game in 2016. Yeah. Oh yeah. He gave me an opening day ball. I think that was 2008. And by the way, for that Heath Bell interview, I drove up to Syracuse, New York for the day from New York City. Just to talk to him. Yeah. Cause he was coming out East and it was very last minute, but... <laughs> He was great. Shout out to him. He just flown in on a red eye, and it was it was a mess. But he was great. Heath is the best. Thank you, Heath. He knows who you are. Yeah, I feel like I was in the middle of saying fourteen other things, and well, I keep look. Yeah. We've got to be very tangential on here. 
And so, you just got to keep up with it. <laughs> That's a terrible swing. Can I be my own hitting coach here? Dude, take your hands back and shift your weight. What do you, what do you, okay, there we got a lesson going. Wow. My dad was no athlete, by the way. He was, he was all brains and not much coordination, but he knew the basics. That's he, all you he, need. Could, he could hit some decent fungos and we played tennis a little bit, but again, by the time I was 10, my dad was in his 60s, so he, you know, he, it was a little bit of a struggle for him, the sports, but much love for Stu Hample. Again, a pitcher hitting a home run helped get me into baseball. How about this thing? That's, this so is... this was the ad that my parents took out for me in my senior yearbook in high school. So they bought a full page ad and uh... he drew that drawing. Here's the first game home run I ever snagged. Mike Stanley, his first home run of the 1992 season. Camera cut away from me before I picked it up. Now, this is just a montage of people and how excited. I mean, people do get excited when you catch one, especially if, because most people I think don't, you go in with the mentality of I'm going to catch one or many, and most people go, oh, never in a million years. Oh, I won the lottery, right? Exactly. There's one. That's... Oh, I filmed that with my palm quarter in San Francisco in 1993 off the Jumbotron. This is an important question. What made you so insane? Yeah, I mean, oh, there I am, I believe age 10 at Shea Stadium, two years, three years before I caught my first ball. Yeah, there I am, uh, that was 93 at the World Series, I guess, so yeah, I would have been yeah. 16 there. Now, I love this, because you always want the origin, but I love this, this Peter Denman article in Beckett Baseball Monthly. This is what started me on my path. I love this because we were talking about batting this. practice. I had a subscription to Beckett. I was obsessed with baseball cards. I never counted my baseball cards. Uh, Max, my intern, do you want to count up all my baseball cards? It might be about a hundred thousand. Yeah, I was obsessed. Any, any that are of you know real value? Um, I mean, well, I have a Ty Cobb from like 1909, 1910. That your grandmother bought. No, it, it came into the family bookstore framed with uh, a newspaper clipping of the Tigers at the time. Hey, do you want to do a fun um, challenge for people is when there's this shot of you with all the wallpaper behind you, <laughs> not this one, but the one we just saw, find the ones that aren't really supposed to be there. It's oh like, yeah, we, we covered up a few of the adult images. Yes. Also, this video was filmed in 96, but it appears during me talking about catching Don't my first all ball. The magic which was 1990, so I'm clearly older than 12 years old there. I thought you were just a mutant By 12 By the way, shout out to the Sioux City Explorers whose t-shirt I was wearing. All right, here we are in Philly. I'm like, sitting down on the right there, like in the fourth I feel like row. we can find Gray you. Gray hoodie. To, to can wonder, you? I don't know. I, well, I don't know. I wonder that. I know where you are. Well, you know everything. Well, there you there, are. I mean, yeah. But we shot a lot in Philly. A lot oh, here's Heath talking about how rude I am. You're not rude, but you're just fixated. You're focused, right? Heath, come on. If I were if I were trying to have a conversation with you, Heath, while you were pitching, you might be a little distracted too. This is not normal behavior, he says. What's your response to that? You're right, and that's great. As I, I said know. earlier, being normal is an insult. And people call me weird you know, the, the middle school contingent out there, they're like, you're weird, and they think it's an insult. And I'm like, yeah, thank you, and? Um, it's, it's the old, like, improv, uh, the, uh, improv thing, like, yes, and. Yes. So here we are, Citizens Bank Park, back when uh, backpacks were allowed in stadiums. Oh, man, no, no more? Nope. I, last year, the Yankees were still allowing backpacks, which is amazing, because I think they're the only team and Yankee Stadium is so strict, you'd think they'd be the first one to be. You know, it. that Mets game we filmed at, we almost didn't get into that one time, too. We, oh, there they were giving you a hard calls. time. Yeah. It's tough to film at stadiums if you're not credentialed because there's all these rules and regulations about your lens can't be longer than this and no professional grade audio or video. Yeah. But it's like an iPhone can film in 4K. That's professional, but you're going to ban everybody's. Yeah. Oh, there I am, bearded again. Well, this what do you is... guys think? Do you like that look? Should I bring back the beard stripes? Can 
And I hate that. I do hate that. Yeah, he was cool. I actually went out and had, I guess, lunch with him oh, he's shortly really... after I talked to him. I think we he's kept a really in touch. cool guy. I'm going to get back in touch with him. Jonathan Fader, you and I are due for another meal together. There you go. Baseball Zach and non-baseball Zach. Now, what do you think about this? And Is yet this not. Can be. It can, and yet not. I mean, I've made so many friends and met yeah. truly tens of thousands of people doing this. That's true. I'm just saying more in the but, moment, if you're there with this goal, you're not there to be social at the moment, in the moment. Not so much. Uh, before there was netting in front of the dugouts. Look at that, how easy it was to get balls. Look at that. Oh, now they have netting covering everything. Ah, oh, so sad. Uh -oh. oh, I had just missed a home run there. You Can you read my lips? So Do I... Yeah, I think Tomas Nido had just hit his first career home run, and I, I got a slightly late jump and read it wrong and maybe could have caught it. And that was the same day that I snagged Stephen Matz's. That's at uh, Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta. I was uh, 15 years old. But yeah, imagine snagging two different players' first career home runs in one day. And look at the... My mom filmed this. And she was tickled. And that's her laughing. Tickled by you. <laughs> it's like she wasn't a believer before she witnessed this herself, maybe. Yeah. I love it when you see old footage of people and then new footage of people. Yeah, yeah. You did that so beautifully in uh, This Is a Robbery, the oh, docuseries you. on Netflix. This guy was a producer on that. Yes. You guys should check that out. I'm not going to link to it, though. That's okay. And I, I like that we also go back and we see the evolution of the refrigerator magnetic number count. What do you call it? The snago meter. The snag someone, someone else... Right. Someone else named that. That's fair. We don't we don't have to take credit for it. This scared me. These flames that I came know, up out I of nowhere. Because you're so I, locked I, on I the flinched. balls, and then there's the, here, there's this right here. <laughs> yeah, that that was a, a genuine reaction. Oh, that was my nine thousandth ball right there. All right, now we're getting the story back on Hit track. Hit by Jock Peterson. I still need him to sign that ball. If anybody has some advice or a connection to Jock Peterson, Jock, if you're watching this. Uh, you know, hit me up. Let's get that baseball sign. Thanks. Appreciate it. Now we're finally bringing it back after this whole journey. All right, we let's be focused. You. Let's bring it back. Here's the 10, second 000. pyramid that I built, which again, I will link to in the description. Now, how did we film this? This is what kind of special There's actually a this? vacuum inside the bucket. Whoa. Yeah, that's how we did that. Resetting to zero. I there's there's magnets, uh, which is actually how hey. I catch all the... Oh, I'm, we're not supposed to talk about that. Shout out to my friend Manish, Ben Hill, Caitlin Cardetti. I think Bossy Edom was in that shot as well. Friends who helped me build the pyramid. And Greg Barish was it. This was a good catch. Look at this one. Woo! Sorry, guy behind me, but... Yeah, that was at Tropicana This is Field. my favorite part. I feel like this is the most telling. Wrigley Field. When you talk about Hunters. being a failure. Because I believe it. I, I don't believe you're a failure, but I believe that you believe that at, that at your real catch. mission in life, you failed. And this is what you're doing to continue to try to make up for that every day. She's less impressed now than she was in 1996. Why? I've done it a few times. Same trick? I love that. That was the shot. day that I snagged the yeah. Stephen Matz homer. This was cool stuff at City Field. I it, was a, it was a double header that got scheduled oh, at God. the last minute because of a rainout, which is why it was so empty, which was like, I need to go. I think I have a good chance of snagging the home run. And then you came. Did I mention that I'm going to link to the Stephen Matz home run video in the description? That one has 3 million views on YouTube. Hey, I shot that, even though... Is that, that the just... most views that any of your stuff has got? Do you know how many views this is a robbery got? They don't no, tell you. I don't know. It's on Netflix. Yeah. Oh, a Randall Gritchick home is... run in Baltimore. Shout out to Ian Perlman who filmed that one. I think this is a really important point that, that Dr. Fader makes, which is you are taking this broken sculpture and everyone's dreams shatter, but you did something unique out of it and now you're in this in-between land. I Trevor think... Bauer served up that home run, I believe. A Brian McCann home run. Adultish. How about, I feel like this is really just a what platform a nice to showcase shot. all those novelty shirts you have. Well, that's pitching for baseball. Okay, They've updated their logo, but again, that's the charity. Check them out, pifbs.org. So similar to Elite Athens. I love this stuff under the lights. I'm honored that Dr. Fader 
sees a similarity between me and pro athletes. Oh, Wait. I butchered the hell out of this quote. All right, we're not. Oh, God, this is embarrassing. Well, I, I can't sentiment. even make eye contact with the... <laughs> Getting balls from umpires, good, good way to go. But again, now there's netting there, which makes it hard. There's Schmitty. Now, this Yoink. guy was furious with you. No, he wasn't furious. No, he was. Come on. I, he was. I got to call a spade a spade. Really? That was a good catch. Well, he shouldn't have been furious because he was sitting there not really paying attention. So I agree. It's it's up for grabs until you get it. But he should be furious at himself. The worst, not the worst thing can be is if you get hit by the ball and then you, it hurts, but someone else gets it. Listen, I don't take baseballs out of people's hands. People are like, you steal baseballs. I'm like, really? Did I unzip someone's backpack? and <laughs> like, If we're both reaching for it and I reach faster and first and grab it, like, okay, well, I deserve that one. Ooh. Wow. Luck. <laughs> I love this break. Oh, that one bounced up. Yeah. Ah, oh, Turner Field. I miss it so much. I read that one beautifully, and I gave that ball to the girl in the pink hat, by the way. Of course, you had to cut that clip before I gave the ball away. Hey, we show a lot of giveaways. You uh, Look, I've been to a lot of games with you. Zach gives away a lot of balls. See, this is how the media just constructs their own story. They want to make me look I'm like a jerk. You show me catching the ball and then cut it before I give it away. Jeffrey. No, you give away a lot of them, but... Oh, I love that quote. It's a great quote. Ranch Ricky. Make your own... This was right ranch. before my 9,000th ball. Not a lot of competition for that one. Uh oh this is all out of order, you're saying? Bullpen in St. Louis. Now, the that one's coming Milwaukee. up in the Sky Dome, right? Oh, Roger the hotel snack. This is insane. This is crazy. Yeah, I'll I, link to that. There's a whole separate video. It's just like two minutes. I'll link to that one as well. I still don't understand how That's that coming up on a million views. Guys, help me get that one to a million, won't you? That's what she said. Hmm. Okay, so now here we finally get into it. This was before the Derby. so many people, by the way, the number one thing or when I go, hey, have you heard of Zach Hample? Some people aren't baseball fans. They go, I don't know. Who is that? And I go, he's caught more baseballs than anybody. They go, well, how does he do it? This is what everybody wants to know. Oh, and this I mean, is such a cool segment. Yeah. Well, this was this was analog uh, kind of stop motion. We took actual photos. I actually <laughs> did put on all the hats and but shirts. But I think it's kind of fun. It's rough around the edges, and it's crude, and it's real. It's like... Can we tell wrong. people about the Indians logo? We, we took... This was done... I was wearing Chief Wahoo, and, uh, you know, as... And now they're not even the Indians anymore. As as we've become more um, culturally sensitive as uh, as a species, I was like, I don't want to be seen wearing that old racist logo on my hat. I'm sorry that I ever wore it. But you know, how about how do you feel about the, what are they the Guardians? The Guardians. And how do you feel about that? I have no problem with it. What are I they mean, guarding? It, it, what are they guarding? It look. People obviously are going to like the old logo. They're going to miss the Indian's name. There's the glove trick being set up. I'll link to my glove trick video in the description. I have a whole video about how that works. But this one's people crazy. are going to miss the name Indians, and I, I get that. But, uh, you know, the times are changing, man. Get with it. Hey, I'm with it. Says the I'm... guy who fights technology and won't use it. So. <laughs> All right, how about this? I'll get with the Cleveland Guardians once you use uh, Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. I gave that ball away to the kid as soon as I showed it to the camera. That's one of my favorite quotes. A tremendous cluster. That might have been the name of the section. Um, now, this was great footage of, uh, of a guy in Boston rubbing up the balls. Houston. This, you know, by the way, talk, I mean, this that thing, kid missed the ball. I didn't steal it from him. It went right over his glove. Did you, did Max say you guys were very do, defensive about this? You were going to do some challenges with people, but like, was this, is there any baseball stadium that's never featured at all in this whole oh, thing? Major League I miss stadium? Globe Life Park. Any, say it again. I said, is every big league team stadium featured at least in a shot of this movie? That's a question I wanted. Ooh. That sounds like a challenge for somebody out there. Yeah. Take a look. I mean, obviously stadiums change, but. You know, at least... Oh, there's, there's Manfred on the ball. Okay, yeah, we did an updated shot for The that. passing of time, I like it. And look, I shot this out of my plane where there's a baseball field. Also, in that shot of me driving in the car, you can actually see the scar on my neck. It's, it's slightly whiter from where I was assaulted at Yankee Stadium in 2015. I, the first time I called Fader, he said this thing, too. He said, oh, 10,000 baseballs. It's just like 10,000 hours. 
And I loved it. I said, you got to say that in the movie. That guy is a bro. He's good. I love this montage, too, because it's, it's just the waiting and the waiting. I also love the Diamond Club in uh, Philly. For Philly. foul balls. By the way, those sneakers right there, I just bought six additional pairs of those shoes. The same ones? Yes. How do you keep... Wait, when I... They're Nikes. Yeah, Nike Prestos. I found some that were available. Like... So I'll just probably break out a new one every year or two. So You love these shoes. I really like them. I feel them. like I can never find so the ones I like. You guys are going to see me wearing those black Nike Prestos for mu much of the next decade, probably. Okay. Now, we're, now we go to the verite section of the film where we're actually chronicling almost in Did real time. Did you shoot time. that? Yeah. Out of the press You're box. good, man. Oh. That too. Mr. That's why it's a little blurry because it's through glass. Uh, oh. But I loved it. There's a guy coming up, an usher here, who I, I didn't even plan this. He just goes, there goes Zach Ample. <laughs> I mean, you can't make this up. Yeah. It blows me away that all these and people I, know who I you are. I barely know that and guy. And then the guy selling the cheesesteaks later. I mean, yeah. everybody. It's like. Oh, those cheesesteaks guys are so cool. This feels like the Truman Show. It's like plants. But it's real. I, I mean, yeah. this is real, folks. Wait, were you seen in that shot? Yeah, I'm in some of these shots. You can see Jeff down in the front row or two with, you had like a big monopod. Uh-huh. What did you do with that 10,000th ball? I, well, did you get it? I don't know. Keep There's watching. Jeff with his camera getting out of the way. Yep. Don't worry. And that's your shot then. Don't worry, yes. Jeff. I won't let you get drilled. Are you using your celebrity to help the other kids? Oh, for sure. <laughs> By the way, the other kids? Is he saying you're a kid? You're a child at heart. I'm wearing right. my Braves hat there because the Braves were on the field. Oh. Oh, this looks like one that I'm going to... But you... No, I... You missed this. Oh. I wanted to put in, like, you don't... I mean, look, you're great, but you don't catch them all. It's true. Although, this guy doesn't think he'll ever be as good. This one knocked my hat off. And what if you meet him? He did. See, I reached over that guy, and then I was like, want the ball? There's that kid. Who, he just caught it. Yep. Oh, this was nice. A little slow-mo. Whoop. Oh, Ryan Feuerstein. He's awesome. What's up, Ryan? 10,000 is a big number. By the way, I should point out, when we filmed this, I, I mean, I was waiting for you to get 10,000. You were how many? 10 away to start? And here's the cheesesteak The cheesesteak guys. guys. Oh. They're so excited. The dude with his hat backwards. It's like everybody's my pulling favorite. for you. Yeah. So, see, they have some low netting in Philly. There's my name on the glove, a custom Wilson glove. I've now changed over to, I don't have it sitting here, but I use a buckler glove now. Don't tell the Wilson people. I mean, I'm cool with Wilson. They have a relationship with pitch-in for baseball and softball, and they they gave me that custom glove, and they've offered me another. So I'll probably use some different gloves as the years go by. This was funny. Get it. Grab it. It's what was he talking about? Just like life? Like no, I mean, he's he sold slushies. He's trying to convince people to buy his product. I know, but get it, grab it, snatch, snatch a slushie. Oh, I was so close to this foul ball. So close. Oh, but is it interesting now looking back at these things? Um, you no, know, we still still gave a fist bump. You know, I was happy for him, but bummed for me. All those empty seats. It makes it easier to run around and catch balls. That was kind of awkward. I jumped for it, but then it ended up being face high. So that, that looked kind of dumb. And I remember I ended that game with no additional baseballs. Yeah, so it's like we knew that 10,000 was going to happen, but I had you sort of for a limited time. and Right. But that's what I mean. Looking back at this, now you know how it played out. Looking right. back at it when you weren't sure how it was going to work. But it's crazy to me. You predict... The three you're going to get. Two two during batting practice and a toss-up. Well, no BP because it rained. Of I course. I love this too. It was just like a great The day I got in. my thousandth ball at Shea Stadium, it rained and there was no BP. And I had a reporter with me. Yeah. Charlie Butler. Shout out to you all these years later. Um, yeah. Ah, uh, Camden Yards with their left field seats being redone. Oh, that guy's cool. Very friendly usher. What a gorgeous place. Oh, Alex Jaffe. You just saw him again, right? I saw and he's him. He's like an adult now. Not quite adult status. 
he gets him fair and square. Did you put his name up there? No. Wait, you didn't? Uh, I don't think so, because we didn't have... His kids were cool. But yeah, I, I ran into that kid. I went to see my friend Jake Jaffe playing baseball, no relation. Put it out there on social media at the very last second. I was like way up in the Bronx or something. Like, hey, come out. I'm watching my friend play. And uh, that kid, Alex, was the one guy that showed up at the last moment. So yeah, it was fun to catch up. And I told him, I'm like, yeah, this film is coming out. Get ready for it. Did you film that? No. Yes. R really? Yeah, in Boston. All this. You so, filmed? Yes. I, I thought that was just some like archival ESPN no, no. footage that we paid no, for. No, 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 I filmed it. Damn, son. Fade in. All right, now we have the more optimistic. One hour later. The sun is coming out. The tarp is coming off. Yeah. I mean, this was this did play out like a like a fairy tale, like because. Again, I we didn't Who you know calling what, a fairy? We didn't know what was going to happen here in Philly and then Baltimore. I didn't know. I mean, if you didn't get this ball, we would I would have stayed there and we would have gone the next day, but but I didn't want to do it that. It worked out, right? Oh, there's Cano. A little preview. That's Boy, why. did I love him at the time and then the whole PED thing. Oh. Oh, yep, there was a toss from the on-field guy. And then Manny Machado hooked up 9999 Oh, yeah, that, that usher's cool also. Oh, man, hey. He always used to throw his pregame toss-up right at, into the you wall. You knew it. There. You called it. Oh, yeah. You said, watch Oh, and out. there was Jeff spotted in that shot. Yeah, I'm wearing my uh, raincoat. And I this section, I tried to let it linger a little bit because it did. You didn't catch it immediately. I forget what inning it was, but... I, Look, I, no case on my iPhone back then because I, I was a madman. This man. was beautiful. Just this, this kind of... You built everything you'd been building up for so long for this moment, and we wanted to let it breathe and linger. A oh, little bit. I like that cross. Yeah, cross I mean, fade I don't, is that what you call it? Cross yeah, dissolve. cross dissolve. I, I don't use dissolves a lot, but it's really here, nice. I mean, time was going by a little bit. Oh, that usher was nice too. And here's Jaffe coming out of the thing, right? <laughs> yeah, a little bit late there, Alex. Was that him? Yeah. <laughs> He just came out like out of nowhere. Yeah, I was hoping to snag a gamer like directly off the bat for number 10,000. I even thought about it would have been nice to sit in the outfield and try to catch a home run for baseball number 10,000, but yeah. But then I might not have gotten it and my night sure. would have ended at 9999. Here it so, is. Here's the moment. So I I did what I had to do and here's uh, Cano walking uh, I can't, off the field. I, I still can't believe this. I mean, there's all these people. How do they how do they pick you? I had a Mariners hat on. Okay, but I mean, I, I wonder when they're doing these toss-ups, how much effort are they putting into figuring out who to throw it to? They're not, they don't care, I would think. <sighs> Excuse me. And then this music, too, that was real in the stadium. The da -da -da -da, like, it all lines up perfectly. It's just so weird. So all those guys slapping me five, they knew it was number 10,000. I watch every one of your videos. That kid was cool. And just like Here's our narrator's voice. Once in a while. <laughs> that guy's just looking at the camera. I love smiling. that guy. I love that guy. He's so funny. Oh, with a commemorative logo for the 25th anniversary of Camden Yards. This is now the 30th anniversary. I wonder if the Orioles will have commemorative balls this year. It's hard to believe that was five years ago. Yeah, this movie took heck? so long. <laughs> but... I think it was worth oh, it. Oh, there's my friend Tim in the orange shirt. Wow. Tim Anderson. There's your friend, Mr. Oriole. Who's this guy? Uh, Bobby is his name. What's his last name? I love this because you always sign the number that you're at, and these are the 10. I kind of wanted to get one at that time, at that exact moment. Yeah, I always I... sign my name with uh, my lifetime number of balls, so signing exactly 10,000 was cool. I, I never got one, though. Some people have asked me after the fact, like, hey, can you sign this but put 10,000? It's like, no. Cause that's you had to be there at that moment, and I there. was, and I didn't get it. It's okay. You had to be there. So, yep, there's Tim again in the orange shirt. That's his spot. Wow. He's caught a lot of home and runs. And this is the area I where I think he, caught... he actually did catch a home run that night. This is where Trout's home run was-ish. 
Oh, to you use that shot again from Fulton yeah. County? Yeah, because this. We're wow, look, we're looking back. These are how all... how lazy to repeat footage. No, these are uh, it's <laughs> intentional that they're repeating it. You're thinking back about your career, and we're thinking back about. There the it career. is, ten thousand. Mm, love that. Watch out for foul balls. Nice natural title, as my dad always used to say. Natural title. Oh boy. Uh oh. Can she speak to the part of you that's compelled to do this now? Has anything changed? Here's my mom being a hater. Well, she's not being a hater. She's just saying that, look, it's ultimately your call. She doesn't, it wouldn't be what she would pick, but she's not you. Here's our sentimental kind of wrap up. But when did my mom say, I don't know how charming it's going to be when he's over 40? Coming Has up. That, oh, no. Yeah. It's like, come on, mom. What, what's that all about? Because that leads into you going, I am turning 40 later this year, or in a few weeks. Mm. What do you think about this quote? I think Albert Pujols should have retired about six years ago. Okay. Does that translate? Sure. <laughs> you, can, you can use it for other people. <clears throat> No, don't, I, that's why I don't ask. No, but you know what? Again, YouTube wasn't as big of a thing for me when we did that interview. I, I know. Now, well, now I make a lot more money doing YouTube videos than I would if I were working full-time at the bookstore. No, we get it. No offense to the store. Yeah. So yeah, at the time, it was like more of a hobby that was taking over my life. Now it's a career that takes but you were money. i mean you did things to earn money through this before i made money but but not but nothing that compared to what i make from youtube and all really? the sponsorships so, oh yeah speaking of zach can i borrow some cash go bleep yourself um yeah no i mean youtube it's like all the people out there who are like get a real job i'm always like that sounds boring why would i want to do that well the point is make your own job right yeah I'm always scruffy. I, I don't like to shave smooth. I don't either. I look like I'm about 12 when I do. <laughs> and evidently Dr. Fader doesn't like hey, to shave either. Hey, a lot of people either. like a little bit of something there. A five o'clock shadow. Oh, here it here is. Here it is. My mom, the hater. She's not being a hater. She's just posing as this time. I mean, this is what I wondered. You said it yourself. Were you going to... You're wondering it. You're posing it. Were you hamming that That's up for the movie, true. or were you really wondering, am I no, going to wind right. this down? Don't look at your phone. Come on. Put your phone away. We're, we're, look at this guy. Unreal. Talking to the people. Oh. I mean, I'm always rethinking things. So, she's right. I think that ball that I was tossing right there was my was it the Miguel run? Rojas home run. Mm -hmm. I got a home run during each game of that doubleheader. I gave Matt's his first homer. Sucked back into the vortex. Yeah. There have been a lot of things that have continued to suck me back into the vortex. Like in the last few years, it's been YouTube. Now it's the documentary. So well, the documentary is finally going to hey, be over. That kid had a mohawk kind of thing. Did you see that? Do you like all these shots? You didn't. Did you film that? Yeah, I filmed all these. When That's the hell Chicago? were you? When, when were you getting these artsy shots of Dodger Stadium in, in Chicago? In 2012, we filmed a lot of baseball stuff at a lot of ballparks. Pittsburgh. That was 27. This yeah. shot too, huh? Yeah, that's at Wrigley. Damn, son, look at that. Look at those. What do you think? I just. Where do you think you get the stuff like this? Nobody shoots stuff that looks like this. I don't mean to. I and just this mean this too. Yeah. So were you in a car driving yes. and filming? Yes. Were you Were you doing the driving and the filming? No, just the filming of that one. Okay. And this is my favorite. I was looking for one long shot to go from the lights down to your glove, and this took a few takes to get it. But I feel like it really summed you up. And then did you slow it down? Is that like a slow mo shot? It was shot in slow motion. Oh. It's a lot of shots of the back of my neck. Hey, that's the view people have behind you. You know what? And there's the, that A2000 uh, glow. To the neck fetishists out there, you're welcome. I was going to say earlier you had a lot of your feet exposed, so 
I might go on Wiki feet. Wiki feet. <laughs> Is that a thing? The, I think so. <laughs> I've heard about it. I love those blurry stadium yeah, lights. Yeah, the bouquet. Like yeah, this yeah. looks so good. I'm glad it's supposed to. What the hell? It looks so good. Now that is actually not Baltimore. Don't. That's Philly. <gasps> I don't want to spoil it. There's some some concessions we have to make. Was that a reflection shot, or that yeah. was through a window? No, it was a ref I think. It, uh, I don't know. I think it might be through a window. Will you ever stop? This is the big question. Yeah. And this was shot on an iPhone. This very ultra slow mo. By you? Yes. Wow. There's your Argosy shirt. Argosy Bookstore, gotta visit. But yeah, bleachers, right field at Yankee Stadium. There are some baseballs that go up there. Those black, oh, I was gonna say those black windows up there is where security has one of their posts. How about the timing with that flare? Wow. Look at all those people in the back rows not playing, paying attention. Well, some people aren't participants. You're, you wanna be a participant. So this a was spectator. a home run. This wasn't staged or set up or anything. Wow. Did you like 10,001 means that you're Beautiful. gonna keep going. It stands and now for every a, ball you'll ever get. Now we have a little uh, bonus stuff. The little coda scene, yeah. We decided, it used to be you give getting the ball signed by Cano, Cano in spring training. Hey, the there's year. my mom up but there. But now we made this little COVID one because we wanted to bring it up to date. And we were shooting at opening day at Yankee Stadium. Hey, Fenway Chris. And what's that, Zach? And how are you? I'll how get close there are someday. You? I'm at 81. You're, you're 19 away. You're gonna After get to... catching two in one game in the playoffs at Fenway Park. Thank you to the Argosy Bookstore. And is that That's it? That's it. Wow. You so survived any, uh, the whole movie. Any final words? I, uh, no, I mean, I feel like the hour and a half movie plus the hour and a half of us talking over the movie probably said it all. But I just would say thank you. It's been quite a journey. I'm excited for it to get out in the world. We hope everybody likes going on along with us and with you along for the ride and uh yeah i'll put in the description where you can watch it and stream it buy it yeah we are in fact friends all these years after having just crossed paths randomly at a game in philly like sometimes we actually hang out and don't even talk about documentary stuff it's true although yeah. not today not today today's all business but we'll do that again soon i hope so all right well, hope you guys enjoyed um, this. That's it. Tell all your friends to watch it. All your family, your pets, you know. Um, bye.